Hi, it's Kia, and this week I'm on vacation, but I hope that you will enjoy this episode from the archives. Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Courage Permission Slip. I'm your host, Kia, and today I have the great pleasure to welcome my friend, Micah Fields, and I would love to tell you a little bit about him. Micah is an amazing chef. First and foremost, he's an amazing, amazing <laughs> chef who has a very impressive resume. He was the youngest to enroll at Le Cordon Bleu School of Culinary Arts. He was featured on Bravo's Top Chef. He owns his own catering company called the Iron Catering Crew, where he is also top chef to the stars, which include bodybuilders and superheroes. We're not naming names, though. And most important among the things on his resume, I think, and this is just a personal thing because I have failed at doing this, but um, he is the undefeated king of grilled cheese. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Welcome, Micah. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Pleasure yeah. to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, I was thinking about this, um, you know, and your history, which I, you know, I had to be reminded of this when you sent this to me and you have, you've been in this game for a long time, you know, thinking of how young you were when you made uh, the decision. Yeah. To go don't, to, don't age me. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not naming I, ages. Yeah. I have some experience. We'll put it like that. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so, but, you know, thinking about that and, you know, usually people get tired of doing the same thing or the same type of thing over a period of time. And I'm really interested to hear from you, Micah, how you have, um, you know, how you've kept it fresh. What what keeps you going? What keeps you showing mm, up? Mm, mm. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, uh, coming out of culinary school, generally speaking, most chefs or students will go right into a restaurant. Mm -hmm. I went straight into a restaurant. I went to a very fine dining three Michelin star restaurant. Then I, this was abroad in Europe. And then I came back to LA closer to home family. Um, and again, went into Beverly Hills, very fine dining restaurant, right? Uh, the best of the best restaurants. I could tell very early on that I was like, oh my gosh, like if I keep just going down this restaurant road and, and line cooking or even sous chef or executive chef, it's the same building that I'm walking into, the same menu most of the time, unless you're changing it up very frequently. Um, things become very repetitive and I didn't want that for myself. Um, I, I like to change things up. I like to see different views and different um, come across different op opportunities, professional opportunities that being a chef, you you have the uh, the, the the pleasure of uh, doing multiple different things, multiple outlets and areas that you can go into. So I just said, you know, I want to try a little bit of everything. And that's that is the the recipe for keeping it <laughs> for keeping it fresh. Yeah. And you know, thinking about all the different points along your career and the, you know, the names that you've worked with and the restaurants, as you said, the three Michelin star restaurants that you have worked in, um, those, it seems like to me, very courageous settings. And so I'm interested to hear from you when you hear the name or when you hear the word courage, um, what does that mean to you? How do you define it? Uh, uh, courage. So, um, you know, I felt like I always sort of knew what courage uh, was, you know, as a child, uh, being an adult, but it wasn't until, you know, it was maybe six months ago, maybe a year ago during, during the lockdown, during COVID, I was watching a lot of movies and I want to say, don't quote me on this, but I want to say it was a, a Clint Eastwood movie. And one of the, the ending lines, the quotes, the ending quote when the screen went black was uh, courage is being scared to death, but saddling up anyways. So anything that you're scared of, anything that, that frightens you or that you haven't done before, if you have that little ounce of, you know what, I'm going to do this anyways, that right there, that's called courage. And um, yes, yes to all of that, feeling it, feeling that fear, feeling that scared feeling or that anxiety and still moving forward anyway. And 
thinking about what you do and the visibility of many of the things that you have done, um, where have you had to give yourself permission to be courageous? Right, right. Um, you know, uh, in my career, uh, being a professional chef, you come across m multiple different people from all walks of life, right? Uh, everybody has, has this nostalgic dish or a nostalgic food item that when they taste it, it takes them back to, some, to, to somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I've had a lot of uh, clients, a lot of people in the past ask me, hey, can you try and recreate a um, childhood dish that I used to have? Or, hey, I have a, uh, I get this a lot, I have a Persian family come over, can you recreate some Persian food for me? And uh, when people ask me to recreate something from their childhood or recreate a memory that they once had, that's when I really get scared, you know? Because making good food at this point for me is, is pretty easy. I understand the, the, the recipes, I understand the dynamic of making a great dish, but when you want to touch somebody's emotions, that's when I get scared of, am, am I going to live up to that? You know, um, am I going to even put the right spice in there? You know, so um, in my, in my business, we, we were about creating memories, um, making memories, new memories, recreating memories. Um, it's, it's a very emotional thing, food for people. So that's when I get scared is when I have to invoke an emotion and I don't know quite how, but you know, uh, even if it's not exactly what they're looking for, most of the time I, I nail it. So I know that I went through the, those stages of, of being courageous. Um, I love hearing that. And I'm wondering, do you have any rituals or routines that you lean on when someone is asking you, like you said, to recreate that memory or that experience? Um, right. Is there anything that you use or lean on to help you push through um, that fear? Um, I, do, uh, <laughs> uh, I was having this conversation, you know, because of my service, they, they, uh, when I go to an event, I have one song usually that's playing for me right before I, I, I go into an event and the, it's, it's the Rocky song, right? So for me, every time I want to say 99% of my events, I will make sure to time it perfectly. So I have that two to three minute mark right before I enter a home or a venue or something like that, right? Where I could squeeze that song in for me. And that, that invokes me to be courageous. I know call it silly. It's a song I know, but when I hear this song, I, for me, that was emotional because when I was 13, watching Rocky, young boy, watching him work out, watching him defeat all those different people, I, that lit like a little fire in me. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, I didn't quite understand it. But now, um, going back to that, anytime I play that Rocky song, I just get fired up and I feel like I can just walk through anything. So that's really my recipe for uh, being courageous, you know, other, other than, you know, um, meeting new people. I get scared meeting new people because I come across so many different clients and, you know, some of them are pretty demanding. So, uh, you know, I have to find that little, that little moment or that little fire within me to, to be able to cook in front of anyone, regardless of whoever they are. Mm -hmm. And so speaking of, you know, some of the demanding nature of the clients that you work with, how do you, um, you know, how does that through line of courage carry you on the other side should there be a criticism or should there be backlash or or anything like that how do you how do you deal with that on the on the other side on the other side of on the other side of perhaps a, a bad review or a critique mm, of something mm, mm, that you right, have created right right yeah um you know there's there's those instances where you know um i I let myself down. I try not to let my clients or customers down too, but you can see if something didn't quite hit the mark, you know, and, you know, I, I try not to beat myself up over it. You know, uh, every day is a new day, I say, and we get to start fresh, but um, I try to just realize, you know, the uh, trying to prove on, on whatever I can do to, you know, um, to, to make it across the finish line the, the next time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that because, you know, sometimes people think a mistake or a misstep is like the final 
you know, nail in the coffin nail. and, right. and, and, yeah. and it throws them off path. It causes them to stop um, instead of just pausing. And I love to hear that in something that you're doing that is really, I mean, it's personal for you, right? Because it's your creation. It's your, right. it's your right. art. It is an art. Right. Right. Um, and to have, um, you know, and to have people criticize that, that can be like, oh, but this is like, this is an expression of me, right? This is an extension right. of me. So, right. but to not, to hear you um, talk about how you try to not let that hold you back or that you don't beat yourself up and you're just taking and learning so that you can apply that the next time. Right. I think that's so helpful for people to hear um, for mistakes that they make on something that doesn't have um, as high of implications as perhaps, you know, cooking for, for someone and, and creating those memories for people. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so in addition to when you're working with people and they're asking you to, you know, conjure up a memory, are there other places, Micah, where you have to give yourself permission to, to be courageous and to, to feel the fear and do it anyway? Yeah, um, I think for me, you know, um, it, it would have to be, you know, walking into a new setting because uh, I think, uh, like I was saying, I meet new clients all the time. Uh, you know, one of the caveats to my job is walking into, you know, a new home or a new venue and putting on the nail of their life, you know. Um, it, it's walking into the unknown for me as far as a, a professional level. On the same time too, um, I have this fear on a personal level that, you know, sometimes maybe I'm thinking about work too much, you know, it's, which is really easy to do when you have a, a family, you know, which I have. So um, it's, 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 it's that fear of one day um, on a personal level of, hey, did I spend enough time with my children? Are they gonna resent me towards, mm -hmm you know, later in their life that I didn't spend enough time. So, you know, that's, a, that's a fear of mine um, that I'm working on every single day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like that's mm -hmm. a constant battle, you yeah. know, uh, because yeah. on one end, you know, it's our livelihood, this business on the other end, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, raising my, my children, um, making sure my wife is happy, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, that's a fear of mine that I feel like is an mm -hmm. ongoing battle. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. Thank you for sharing that and for being, you know, really honest with that, because I think as entrepreneurs, I think especially that's something that we have to grapple with, because as you said, the business is the livelihood, right? The business is the yeah. thing that allows mm -hmm. you to have the home and to have the things that you need to provide for your family, um, but also needing to strike that fine um, balance on the other side of wanting to be there and not have your kids get to a place where maybe they're like, yeah, well, my dad was never around or my mom was never right. around or anything like that. So thank you for, for sharing that because I know that that is something that people grapple with quite a bit of, you know, wanting to be a, a good provider and be present, but also do the thing that not only provides, um, you know, resources and, and consistency and safety for the family, but it's also a, a form of personal fulfillment when you are good mm -hmm. at and successful with, with what you're doing. So thank you again for mentioning that. Absolutely. Um, so as you might imagine, there is someone who is listening to this, listening to this conversation, listening to what you do, and they're thinking about um, goals and dreams and ideas and maybe a vision that they have, but they're not taking action on it because they're afraid. They're fail right. afraid of failing. They're afraid of making that fatal mistake. And so what guidance or advice do you want to give to that person who's listening, mm -hmm. who has that thing that it just won't leave them alone, but they can't bring themselves to take action on it? Right. Um, I, you know, I guess whether it be in your personal life or your professional life, um, I always told myself, you know, because uh, early, you know, it, I've, I've owned my business probably five, about five years now. Mm -hmm. And 
a couple years before that, somebody very dear to me, I was mentioning that, hey, you know, I think I'm going to start up my own business. You know, somebody very close to me said, you're not ready. Mm. And for me, that lit a fire in me. Mm. Um, I was scared, absolutely. But it was that little bit of you're not ready. It, like, it was almost I was telling myself, like, I got to show them, you know what I mean? So that was my sort of fire that lit me to do this. Um, mm -hmm. It was also too, you know, very early on when I went to culinary school, I, I was a kid and I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew I wanted to have my own business. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, it, as I got older, it was okay, let's start thinking about it. Let's start, let's start kind of planning it out. Let's start learning in the setting that you are now, was it you, whether it had been a, a line cook or an executive chef at, at, at a hotel or something like that, of uh, let, let's get in the mode. So um, it was always weighing on me that like, if I don't start to do this soon, then I feel like the regret of not doing it would have weighed way heavier on me than later in life than the fear that I had now or the fear that I did have going on so it was it was mm. that sort of regret that weighed heavier of me saying okay you know what I don't want to regret this move so at the end of the day what do you have to lose as you know as long as your family will be safe as long as you you know you won't become homeless you don't sell your home you know make those little steps take those little make yes. make, make little goals and yes. those little goals will add up to larger goals and eventually before you know it you'll have it you'll have you have achieved your goal. So just start making little thoughts, little, little thoughts in your mind, you know, start planning it out, you know, little things here and there, and eventually uh, you'll overcome that, that fear. Uh, thank you so much for saying that, Micah. And in particular, I'm really glad that you pointed out the, the long-term effect of not taking action on what it is that you're wanting to do. And that is that regret, right? Like which, which would you prefer the pain of regret, which is, right. I mean, for any of us who have experienced regret, you know, that that is a, that is a pain that does not go away easily. So what is it that you want to experience the pain of regret of never having tried at all, or the mm -hmm. pain of, I tried it, it didn't work out exactly right but at least I did it. And no one can say that I gave up or no one can say that, right. you know, right. I, you know, I took the easy way out. So I think mm -hmm. that is really important is thinking about mm -hmm. how are you going to feel at the end of your life or in a year or five years, like right. think about the long-term impact of not doing anything um, because you can always recover from a setback. Always. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not the end of the world. So exactly. just give it a go. <laughs> exactly. And little steps, little steps. Exactly. All little it steps. takes, right? Mm -hmm. Like we don't, mm -hmm. I remember um, my dad, you know, when he was saying, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be an executive. And he's like, well, you don't start out being an executive, right? Like you don't start <laughs> right. out at the top, right? right. And so, exactly. but you know, you have to work at it. And eventually, just as you said, Micah, eventually you will get there. You just keep working at it, keep working that muscle right, right. Um, and, and putting in the work each day um, to get what you want. It's you know, absolutely, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. Well, Micah, I really, really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I am sure that people will want to know more about you and connect with you. Where can they learn more about you? Oh, uh, well, they can definitely go to ironcateringcrew.com, yes. <laughs> uh, info at ironcateringcrew.com. Uh, they can also reach out to us through Facebook and Instagram. Wonderful. And I will include all of this information in the show notes um, so that people can follow along and see all of your beautiful creations and all the amazing work that you are doing. Um, thank you, Kia. You are welcome. So thank you everyone for joining today. I hope you uh, are walking away inspired and uh, with just a little bit more information that you need to make your dreams bigger and more important than your fears. Until the next time, thank you for joining. Thank you.